which is very interesting. Every institution always has obbies and orgies. And so good morning to you, Professor. Good morning, Priscilla. Welcome to NTV. Thank you very much, and good morning, viewers. OK. All right, I'm also joined by Kenneth Mbogo, who is the chairman for Chambogo University Convocation. And he's also here to deliberate about the same subject matter. I will start with Kenneth. Uh, you are an OB of the university. When did you graduate? Uh, thank you so much, Priscilla. Good morning, our viewers. Yes. I am a graduate of Jamburg University 2010, mm -hmm. and uh, I still I'm soon graduating with them another course because I value Jamburg all through. Okay. Yes. All right. And what caused you to actually stay with the university for that long? We're talking about a stretch of over 10 years. Very true. I think uh, I think love for the university. Once you love a place, you stay. That's enough. Live alone in Bogo, Chambogo, but Chambogo deserves better. Chambogo is my home, and I feel Chambogo is part of me. So that's why I serve it passionately. That's why I'm still with them from a student okay. now to staff. And what are some of those particulars that you actually fell in love with while you were at Chambogo? Just starting with the name, mm -hmm. Amumbogo, the university. Oh, yes. <laughs> but <laughs> also, <laughs> I wanted so much. I love working hard. But when I looked at Chambog University in the beginning, I love its uh, improvements now. That mm -hmm. in 2007, 2008, we never had tarmac in some places. Currently, it is improving, and I want to see it better. That if it was able to change because of able leadership, and now it's having better able leaders, like Professor Elika Tunka, mm. I'm so sure we are moving towards the greatest heights okay. ahead of us. So I have to be part of it, part of the history of drainages that weren't clear to the history of what, what may be good lights now on the walking ways, but also in the history that I want to see a big Chambog University as the best institution in East Africa. Okay, all right. The yes. Vice Chancellor is right here next to me. Uh, he wants to see a big university, one of the most influential in the East African region. After 21 years of inception, 20, 2001, it's now 2022. Why have you thought of mobilization of the alumni now, over 20 years later? Yeah, Priscilla, world over institutions of higher learning tend to rely on their alumni for their advancement. The university has undergone a restructuring in 2020, which transformed the old structure we inherited in 2006 into a structure to manage the current state of the university, the student population, the staffing requirements, the new demands in higher education. And the new structure created a unit called the Advancement and Alumni Relations Unit the Advancement and Alumni Relations Unit. That was in recognition of the role of the alumni in the advancement of higher education institutions. So this unit is created under my office, and one of the targets we have is for this unit to reach out to the alumni and mobilize them to make a contribution to the growth of the university. It's the same unit that was going to be doing fundraising raising funds for the institution through projects like PPPs, all in all in realization of the fact that funding of higher education institutions is going to continue reducing. Higher education institutions suffered a 40% budget cut arising out of COVID. And even when COVID appears to be going, these cuts are not going away. We are experiencing more cuts. Mm -hmm. If you realize this budget which was ready yesterday, Higher education institutions do not feature there. They do not feature prominently as having gained from the uh, budget provisions. So institutions are being called upon to be innovative, to start thinking outside the box, to reach out to the most reliant force of the institution, who are the alumni. Mm -hmm. In harnessing this relationship, I've been talking to my colleagues at the university. The next five years are going to be focused on student welfare issues. We must focus on student issues, issues that affect the welfare of the students, their well-being on campus. It is by having a good experience at the university that the alumni have that attachment to the institution. If your experience is not good, if you are mobilized, you will say that there is nothing I want to do with that institution. So we must focus 
on building a stronger relationship with our alumni. And Chambogo University has very many people who went through the university. Mm. When we talk about Chambogo University alumni, we're talking about those who have gone through the university since its formation in 2001. And then those who were there in the institutions that formed the Chambogo. These institutions are historical, like ITEC, mm -hmm. Institute for Teacher Education. It produced so many teachers. Wherever you go in this country, talk to a teacher, say I'm from Chambogo. Uganda Polytechnic Chambogo, UPK. These produce technicians for the industry. You go to all industries. There are so many graduates of Chambogo. Mm -hmm. Then the Uganda National Institute for Special Education, UNICE. Many people who have, who have gone through that institution. So there has been a yearning for these people, for us to reach out to them. They want to make a contribution, but that mobilization has been lacking, and that's what we are doing. Okay, all right. Under the convocation, <coughs> Kenneth, um, uh, you definitely have something to say in terms of the student welfare issues. What yes. are some of the issues that are currently being challenged with the students at Chambogo University? I now? think mainly in answering that, we have uh, two versions of students, because even the former, we call them students. But in the current, I think uh, I'll answer both versions. The former had a challenge that was later solved. It was major about certification of their documents, that they could return and have big lines. Later, after um, talking to top management, they understood this, and it is solved now. We no longer have that as a challenge. But also, currently, the students always bring in their challenges. We are focusing on, like Professor said, why we are changing to total students. They had issues of uh, missing marks that is no longer there, but also there is a big issue that delayed results. I think we are handling this and we're in touch with the deans of uh, faculties and also the heads of departments. Because it is bad that you move to another semester, you have not seen the other results for the other semester. Yet some of them have funders who insist on having results for the other semesters first to be presented, then they get the funding. But all these are going to be solved. We are looking forward to being more of uh, totally down to them, want to listen to students because they are the first clients you have as Chambogo University. So total respect to them means we are moving as a team. Okay. Uh, Professor Katunguka, you're looking at a university. Your recent graduation had over 9,800 students graduating. Yes. You currently have on campus about 33,000 students mm -hmm. that are enrolled in your different programs. Mm -hmm. So if we are to date back to, 20 to 2001, you're looking at over 80,000 mm -hmm. students that mm -hmm. are potential alumni. Now, of course, Jambago University is a big university here in Uganda and across Africa. How, what strategies are you are going to apply to be able to attract those thousands of students back to university and to participate actively into the alumni. Thank you, Priscilla. In, in, in addition to the students who have gone through the university, Chambogo University has been in charge of the affiliated institutions, including the National Teachers Colleges. So all the students who go through the National Teachers Colleges are Chambogo University alumni. All the students from the primary teachers colleges and in this, we have about 35,000 per year. So the population is big, it is huge. So we, were, we have come up with ways of reaching out to them. One of them, today we are having a dinner. This is, a, we have invited about 100 people. These are going to be the, the front line discussants, if you want me to call it that, that's this way. So we are going to engage with them, to, to learn from them how they think we can reach out to the alumni to mobilize them. Because we may, not, we may think we have all the knowledge, but they are in the private sector. They know. Mm -hmm. They know their colleagues. So we want to reach out to them and discuss with them how we can reach out to the alumni. In addition, we have created a website which we have circulated to them so they can register online. And we have over about 3,000 people registered now, and they are continuing to register. From this dinner, one of the things we are going to do is to create a form for each person who comes to give us a list of the alumni that they know so that we can increase the numbers and we register all these. So we're going to have a register. It may come up to about 100,000 people, massive. And then we agree on activities which will bring us together. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know whether that crew can come to that later. So once we have mobilized them, once we have heard from them, then we can engage them on how we can work together in a partnership, in a deep partnership, mm -hmm. so that we can cause change in Chambugu. We may sell some ideas to them about certain projects, because when you are fundraising, when you are calling people to make a contribution, they want to know what they are contributing to and how you are going to make sure that their contributions are well guarded. So we want them to drive this process. If we agree on a project, then we sell it to them, they own it, they drive it in partnership with us. It's not the entire Chambogo University project. Chambogo University is a public institution mm -hmm. with heavy bureaucracy. You can never take a decision unless you have gone through about six committees, and that can take a year or so. Mm. But they're in the private sector. For them, they, ha they, they come up with an idea, they move with it, they do it, they finish it, they do another thing. Mm. So we want to learn from them how this can be done. Okay, I'll turn to the chairman, I believe. Uh, for this one, in terms of um, so many institutions, especially globally or out yes. of Uganda, they get mm. to rely a lot on the alumni yes. uh, for innovations, for development of the university, and also for building the university's brand name. Yes. Now, when mm -hmm. these are signed up and you start rolling out the different campaigns and projects, what are some of those projects that you would like the alumni to actually focus on in the initial stages? Yeah, very true. Thank you so much. I think just like from the universities you have benchmarked from, which universities are like uh, University of Glasgow, University of Cape Town, University of uh, Massachusetts, all of them are capable. And uh, we are focusing on a very big venture. For example, after sharing with our alumni today, we are thinking of a big student center that can even um, house indoor games. It can have a guild office, maybe a full guild, whereby guild offices are there, dinner offices are there, saloons there, because you realize we have a big dot of around 33 at campus. Saloons can be there and these are a very good venture for all these students. Mm -hmm. This is a big resource. We have uh, different things that they can utilize. We can also, if the students can, in the same way, the same building can be used. We have Dini's office there, such that every problem regarding students can be there. Look at the ladies. All campuses work out their nails, it can be the same. And we are focusing on one thing. Mm -hmm. How do we have something big that can bring a better image to the university, but also in the same way. Even if they are like, we are putting up a block, and this block can have also a big health center. Anything, but majorly in the consultative meeting, want them to give them we want them to give us mm -hmm. their own version. But to us, we would focus on a very big dream of a big student center, maybe with even swimming pools. This is not anywhere in uh, any university in East Africa. We want to start at Chambogo University. Okay. Quality, not right. quantity. Okay, quality, not quantity. Thank you so much. Turning back to you, Professor, what are some of those achievements that the university has had over the spell of over 21 years that the alumni can actually go back, especially those that are here, but more so those ones that are away, that may compel them to actually sign up for what you're calling them to do? Yeah, thank you, Priscilla. The, the university has undergone tremendous transformation from 2001, the formation of that, the merger of the, those institutions. The merger was problematic, so taking off took some time, including the changes in leadership and the rest. But over the years, I think we have created a peaceful environment on campus, which has ensured that teaching and learning has continued. Mm -hmm. We graduate to about 8,000 students, 9,000 students per year, and that's a big, a big plus for the university. We have increased the number of programs from uh, uh, diplomas, bachelors, masters, and PhDs. And we, we took a deliberate decision to stop running many diplomas. Mm. Because these diplomas are being run by many other institutions across the country. So we have been focusing now on bachelors, highly demanded bachelors programs. Mm. We also focus on masters. And we have been told these PhDs for the first time. Okay. In 2019, we graduated PhD students. So this is going to be the trend. Okay. We have also introduced to research. Every institution of higher learning must do research, must find out new knowledge, must give new knowledge. 
find out problems of society and address them. All right. And that's where we have gone. We have gone now. We have created a competitive research scheme, given it money, 1.6 billion per year. Students, I mean members of staff, compete for this money. They write proposals addressing challenges of society. All right. Finally, Kenneth, uh, do you have a system that has been put in place to actually have these alumni be contacted, register, and uh, sign up for future ventures? Yes. We have uh, an online link, and it is uh, having every detail that we need to get from uh, our alumni. And I think I can read it to them. Yes, please. It is uh, HTTPS colon, then we put slash, slash, alumni dot chu, chu is KYU dot AC mm -hmm. dot UG slash, register dash, as dash, alumni and slash. But also, if you cannot get it clearly because of time, you can now uh, straight call me 773 701 721. 773.